Hi Sagittarius, welcome. So Sagittarius, this is going to be your reading. I'm going to start with the general messages and then I'm going to go into the you versus them love reading. My readings are timeless, so I just trust that whenever you find this, that's when it's for you. And my readings are also law of attraction based. So I'm also counting on law of attraction to bring those of you who are going to resonate the most to this video. So there's likely something in it for you, but it's a general take what resonates, leave what doesn't. So uh, Sagittarius, um, I went to do your reading and then I had to pause, but I do want to bring up that I got Capricorn energy out. Um, so you could be dealing with somebody who has Capricorn in their chart, or maybe you do. Um, or it could just be like the overall vibes, which was kind of authoritative, a little bit bossy type of energy, right? Um, but that could be a good and bad thing depending on, you know, how you're handling it. But it was a very authoritative, like disciplined energy that was showing up uh, when I attempted to do the reading the first time. So I want to bring that uh, to the forefront, but I did get some additional cards out here. Um, as I was speaking earlier, and it's the fourth house of roots, the card of conjunction, and the card of the flow. So this is also Cancerian Libra energy showing up. So it's really highlighting family, your home, your inner world. Um, it also talks about comfort and cooking, but also real estate, your housing situation, all of that being highlighted right now. Um, and you have a card of empowerment following that, which is about exactly as it sounds, like empowering yourself to, I was going to say do the right thing, but I also, I want to add a caveat, do the best thing for you, okay? And then you also have the card of the flow, which is about quite literally going with the flow, staying in harmony, staying in peace, staying in balance. Not always the easiest thing to do. Um, given like the rigid energy that is showing up around uh, the Sagittarius energy and also we just had a full moon that was quite a powerful and intense full moon if you ask me especially if you have Pisces placements in your chart um, but let's get into it and see Sagittarius where this is going I think I want to use these cards so actually first I want to use my first I want to shuffle these <laughs> then I'll finish my sentence here I want to use the Osho Zen cards first so let's see what else we have coming through for my Saggies the master no nothingness and the moment to moment so I love the master because it's similar to like the magician in traditional tarot um, where the magician is like having all of what you need to manifest what it is that you want, right? Being pointed in the right direction, if you will. It's interesting to me that it's next to the card of nothingness though. So it may feel to you like you're literally manifesting like nothing, like nothing's happening, you're trying your best and yet you just don't seem to be like pushing the dial or moving the dial I should say um, and it's interesting because when I attempted to do the reading the first time I literally I had a distraction but then I also had a thought like oh who cares you know like the sense of like I don't even give an F right now <laughs> you know not about you Sagittarius but I feel like this could be how you are feeling so that's why I'm bringing it up like, you know, it, trying your best and like not seeing the results or not seeing anything happening. It's just like, oh my God, fine. I just give up, like whatever. But it's so funny because like the moment you give up, which is the art of allowing, the moment you give up on something, the more likely you are that you manifest it. <laughs> it's almost like in the letting go process, right? that you allow enough space energetically for it to actually come to fruition. Life hack. So anyways, they're encouraging you to take it moment by moment, day by day, not to let yourself get overwhelmed in this energy. Just do the best you can in the right here and the right now without the manifestation and watch as, as the more you prioritize just being happy with what you currently have right here and right now, 
And the more consistent you get in that Sagittarius and the more you practice that, you will be amazed at how quickly all of those things that you wanted in the past even begin to materialize, begin to become a reality for you, right? So it's your task is to stay in alignment. The universe kind of does everything else. So, um, and take it from me, it works, right? Anytime I'm like really worried over a problem or like I'm dwelling, nothing ever changes. It, sometimes it actually gets worse. <laughs> but then the moment I'm like, you know what, I don't even care. Or I let it go or I get distracted by something else. And it's like, boom, there it is. Or there's the solution or there's the thing I was looking for. You know what I mean? So it works. Let's see what else we have coming through for you, Sagittarius. So you have the Ten of Wands here. What does Sagittarius need to know about this time frame? Four of Pentacles. Yeah, some of you are holding on to the struggle as opposed to maybe because there's a misunderstanding of the way, you know, the law of attraction works. Or some of you are not really meaning to do this. But it's just become habitual or like a habit or something that you practice without an awareness around. So there's this idea here showing up Sagittarius that you must have to struggle, you know, and save up. And then maybe once in a while life will eke out a little bit of a happiness for you or a little bit for you to be gratitude or grateful for. And it's like, no, it's just. It's, it's the exact opposite. Life is meant to be fun and easy and flowing. And gratitude is meant to be in abundance, right? But who controls how grateful we are or how much gratitude we have? We do. But a lot of us unconsciously only let ourselves feel that sense of appreciation and gratitude when we have something to be grateful for, right? When the manifestation hits or the lotto hits or you know what I mean like something good happens to us but that's kind of you holding back without even an awareness that you are holding yourself back because truthfully you could feel grateful and appreciative for absolutely no reason just because just because you woke up today just because the sun is shining just because it feels good you know it feels good is that a not a good enough reason because and the reason I'm telling you this is because if you feel appreciation and gratitude, regardless of if you have anything to be happy about, you will inevitably have something manifest to be happy about. In fact, many things. The universe will keep giving to you and keep giving to you when you're in that state of appreciation. So, you know, like from a religious contest, uh, a, a, from a religious context, that's why they would always say, count your blessings. Count your blessings, say your prayers, thank God, because the more thankful you are from a law of attraction, spiritual standpoint, the more you attract that back to you. Does that make sense to you? Like most people pray from a place of lack. I need this. I want this. I do not have this. Well, when you pray from that stance, the universe can only deliver you more of the lack. But when you pray from a place of gratitude, I am thankful for this. I am appreciative for this. Guess what? Ding, 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 ding. You've hit that sweet spot. So it's about changing your perspective, Sagittarius. And it's also, some of you think patience. Oh, I must just wait, hold out, struggle work hard and then someday, you know, you know, or on the weekend, I'm going to feel really good, you know, or when the payout comes and it's like, no, feel good now without the payout. And, and who cares if you look insane to other people, you know, and they're like, why are you so happy? And you're like, no reason. And they're like, what? <laughs> because it's coming. What's coming? The thing you can't see. Okay. I can't see it, but it's coming. It's called faith. But anyways, it does kind of make you look crazy to people who don't understand the laws of the universe. But be happy anyways. That's what I'm saying to you. Be happy without it and it will be yours. The judgment, the king of wands, and the two of pentacles. So I also feel like Sagittarius, you have choices here coming up as well. That you're going to be needing to make some decisions around. And that's what... 
I think that message came from at the very beginning. It's not about choosing what's right necessarily, but what's right for you. And there's a difference between the two. One is prioritizing you, go in that direction. Like, you know, um, empowering yourself to feel out a situation and come from that feeling space right here. Um, give me more on this, hold on a second. Yeah, some of you, um, it, it's about kind of also letting go of a fear of authority or of empowering oneself, right? Standing up for what you believe in, which I actually feel like, you know, most Sagittarius, at least all Sag Saggies I know, you don't really struggle with that. I feel you to be a very honest, very blunt, <laughs> very outspoken energy. So it's interesting to me that there seems to be a fear showing up around that energy. And it could be also, by the way, somebody you're connecting with, you know, um, and I'm getting like uh, avoidant. Hold on a second. Something about avoidance. Sorry, I lost that one. But I don't know if this is you or somebody you're connecting with. You could be connecting with somebody who just stresses you out as well, by the way. And this could be a uh, authority figure um, or a masculine energy in your life. And, you know, at, at the same time, I feel like you're kind of pushing through that anyways and like empowering yourself to let that go or to let it go. And this full moon in Pisces really might be helping you to do that, Sagittarius. So bravo, bravo, because I actually feel progress in that situation specifically. So let's see what else we have coming through for my Sagittarius. Ooh, five of swords, not my favorite energy. Why? Oh, okay. What a dickhead. Excuse my language. <laughs> I will explain myself in a second. The ten of swords. You know, I don't like to use derogatory terms in my spiritual readings, but honestly, like, I'm human too. Like, this is how we speak. Like, who is dealing with the dickhead? I'm sorry, um, but I don't know if this is you or somebody you're dealing with. I do feel it is a masculine energy, but take it as it's resonating, okay, because it is a general reading. There is an energy showing up here that is kind of a win-at-all-cost, exhausting stresses people out or you out bossy ass energy right here and again this could be you and if so not a good look for you and it's not it feels like power but it's actually going to render you powerless to come from that space okay and we'll talk about that in a minute but if I feel for a lot of you, this is more so somebody you're dealing with. And guess what? If they're going about something in a controlling or manipulative or they have bad intentions, right? It's going to all fall down. It's going to all fall down. You know, they're not going to have a leg to stand on. Karma is going to bite them in the butt. That's not how you treat people and that's not how you go about your business. And I feel this might be work related, but again, it could be within relationships or family or the home. Um, but you know when somebody thinks like they're going to get their way by just being an a-hole, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, you will respect me because I will demand it. And it's like, no, no, I won't. Probably going to resent you and hate you. But outwardly, you might get uh, compliance, but inwardly it does not work because that's not how energy flows. You do not get what you want out of anyone by enforcing it through these negative emotions, through control, through manipulation, through, you know, intimidation. You may think 
that you get the results you want because outwardly it may seem people are complying with you, but just give it some time. And eventually it will undoubtedly fall apart because you can only receive what you give. So if you're outwardly pushing a negative emotion, then likely you're going to get eventually a, the negative outcome. You know, people will stop respecting you. People will, you can't control how people feel. You may be able to control their behaviors to some degree, but you cannot control how they truly feel and what they choose to do about that. If we take it from a work setting, say if this is a boss or you're the boss, you know, and you're trying to get things done through that negative emotion, right? Um, do it because I say so, not because I do so type of mentality. You may get outwardly compliance, but watch as your employees fall off the map, leave you, betray you, talk about you behind your back, don't respect you, causes a toxic environment, yada, 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 yada. Do, 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 do. That's a cause and effect. That's a cause and effect. I wish all of the bad bosses of the world could watch this. <laughs> Terribly. You do not get positive results from negative enforcement. Not with your children, not as a boss, not in relationships. Never. You'll never get that. It doesn't matter. I'm equating it to work, but really this could be about any of those that I just listed. Because that's just not how the law of attraction works, right? You get what you give. So if this is you, Sagittarius, going about something that way because you think it's going to make a big difference, it's it will be temporary and then it's going to fall apart. Whether it be at work, in a relationship, you know, disciplining your children, whatever this is about. If this is you dealing with somebody like this, and for a lot of you, I feel you're more of you are on this end. You're dealing with somebody like this. There's no need to fight fire with fire or make a point or make a stand because it's going to fall apart anyways and karma is going to come in. So the encouragement for you in that situation is, of course, you know, place your own boundaries. Healthy boundaries are good. You don't even need to express them. It could be an internal agreement with yourself. It's up to you. But then back up. Go with the flow. Stay in your lane, Sagittarius. People can only affect you how, with how much you allow them to. And stay rooted. Especially if this is like a work thing. Now say this is somebody who's up in your face, who's living with you. And there's always one person in the comments. Why am I they're being abused? If you're being abused, get out. And stop watching tarot. Go get therapy. Like, help. In addition to. I mean, you can watch tarot and get therapy. But you know what I mean? Like, in those extreme circumstances, remove yourself from the situation. You know? And then work through it internally. But if it's uh, not such an intense type of thing and you have the ability to soothe it with your mind and do the energy work, then do the energy work first. Get into the flow, empower yourself, focus on what matters most to you, and also know that you're not manifesting nothing because it may seem that there's a delay, but there is a change coming. Just take it day by day and do your best to stay in that good feeling space of appreciation and gratitude. Okay. What an intense reading. Always with you. Okay, so we're going to leave it there. And then I'm going to go to the love reading. What does Sag need to know? What is the guidance? Card number 56. I praise abundance wherever I see it. If you're seeking financial well-being for yourself, you must praise financial well-being wherever you see it. If you would like more abundance for yourself personally or for others you care about, you cannot criticize those who are experiencing it. When you criticize or condemn or push against anything, you activate the opposing vibration to what you seek every time, no exception. Praise it where you see it. Very interesting. Okay. Woo! So we're going to leave it there.
for this part of the reading. I'm gonna go to the love reading now. I'm gonna clean my cards up. Stay right there. I'll be back in just a second. And welcome back. All right, Sag, now we're going to go into the you versus them reading. I'm gonna go back and forth between you and the person you may be connecting with. It's a general. Take what resonates, leave what doesn't. Flip the rolls if needed, and let's go. So you have the card of the outsider, and this person has the card of guilt. Ooh, very interesting. So it is quite literally what it sounds like. Some of you may, you know, feel like you're on the outside looking in or just feel like an outsider in general. Um, and then this person is dealing with a guilty conscience right now, and I'm not sure why, but we are about to see. So let's go. I'm going to look at recent past, and then I'm going to look at how you both perceive and feel about each other in the now. And then, most likely, future outcomes. If I can shuffle. <laughs> so, let's see for my Sagittarius. What do we got here? Sagittarius, recent past. Death and rebirth. Two of Wands. And the world card. So quite literally, Sagittarius, some of you, you know, had to make a decision in the past that maybe changed, you know, the relationship dynamics or changed. Um, sorry, hold on. I had a burp. <laughs> or may have changed you yourself or your life. You know, I, I'm getting the phrase, it, I had to do it, or it's something you had to do, something you had to do for yourself as well. Um, and good for you, because I don't feel this was like an easy change or something that um, was easy for you to do. But you have come full circle. There's been sort of some, some sort of karmic completion and ending here showing up as well. So let's look at this person's recent past. Person... Sag is dealing with recent past. King of Swords. Nine of Cups. And the Eight of Swords. So in this person's recent past, um, it's weird because there's like this very serious like energy, like wanting to be taken seriously, and yet there's this like light, fluffy, I'm gonna do what makes me happy type of vibe. So it could be that you know, some of somebody was taking their happiness very seriously and making decisions from that standpoint, like what would bring me pleasure right or what would make me happy but i also get a sense because the guilt card is over this that maybe there's some remorse or regret about that like and or like yeah i could also read this as like, you know, this person not really taking seriously enough how you felt and your happiness in the past. And there is guilt or remorse around that. But see, the Ace of Swords is here. So I feel like there has been clarity on this person's end about their wrongdoing, okay? Or what they perceive as their wrongdoing. Um... And so I feel that they have gotten some resolve or some answers around this recently. Okay, so. Oof, all of a sudden I got a headache. I'm sorry. I'm also getting, are you serious? Somebody didn't take somebody seriously in the past. So let's go into the now and how you perceive each other in the now energy. What do you think about this person, Sag? Nine of Swords, Four of Swords. And 
temperance. So this is you showing up here. Lots of sleepless nights showing up. Lots of disturbances uh, in the energy field. I feel like you handled this as well as you could or, you know, handled it well in general, I feel, according to spirit anyways. Um, but I feel like this, this has created a lot of restlessness in your energy, Sagittarius, this person, this connection. Um, I'm not sure like you let on to that either because this is like keeping a brave face. This is like, you know, it's a very strong energy, but to me it also can be a bit misleading in that, you know, it, it, it seems like, oh, I've got a brave face on. Now I have that song in my head. It's from NF. Put your brave face on as if like something's not bothering you, but you are bothered trying to make peace with it, but it has caused a lot of restlessness for you and restless nights. I feel as well. I feel you're on the mend, but uh, let's see this person's point of view. How do they perceive you? And I have that song in my head, birds of a feather. Uh, she says, uh, I want you to stay till I'm in the grave, till I ride away dead and buried, till I'm in my casket you carry. A dark song. Of course, it's Billie Eilish. She's always a little dark. I love her. <gasps> Isn't Billie Eilish a Sagittarius? I think so. Check that song out. Anyways, um, the hangman, not the hangman, the hermit, the king of wands, the hierophant, the queen of cups. Very powerful in how they view you. Um, and very interesting to me as well. I feel like. It's weird because I, I'm just going to say what I'm feeling. I feel you made this person kind of question themselves, their beliefs, what they stand for. Um, they actually see you as a very strong and dominant personality, even if you don't present yourself that way. Um, but I also feel so are they, or they have that capacity here. Um, you kind of like almost force this person to have maybe their own spiritual awakening or to go within themselves and like really discover who they are and what they stand for and how they really feel. Um, this person has a soft spot for the connection, Sagittarius, whether you're aware of it or not. And I feel, again, there's a sense of guilt here showing up. So let's go into how you feel about this person. How do you feel underneath it all? My goodness. Uh, the Six of Pentacles, the Emperor, the Page of Pentacles, and the Moon. Well, the Moon is a very deep feeling energy, but it can also be quite emotionally overwhelming. Um, interestingly enough, I feel that there is like a sense of reciprocity here or, um, a sense of generosity on your end and yet controlled, you know, not just giving yourself away, but open to, you know, an equal give and take within the connection. Um, I feel that there is potential here, or at least in your heart, you hope for that potential or that growth. Um, but I also feel like you're really not wanting to completely step out of your comfort zone or to completely lose your balance in the situation. Like, I'm going to give what I feel comfortable giving and not an ounce more type of energy. 
um, looks like a calculated um, move on your part. Okay. So let's see how this person is feeling underneath it all. The Five of Wands. Temperance. And the Five of Swords. Whoa. <gasps> Kind of reminds me of the energy I was getting in the spiritual reading. You were kind of dealing with a nasty energy there. It could very well be this person um, or somebody they're connected to, but take it as it resonates. Because they've got five, two fives here, which fives is about conflict and change. But um, this person feels very conflicted about you Sagittarius or the connection they they feel like it's almost a battle that they cannot win um, and yet it's hard for them to see their part in it it's hard to, for them to see your perspective and that's really you know something that's on their life path for them to tap into that more self-awareness type of energy. Like, what energy am I giving off? Oh my gosh, this is directly tied to the spiritual reading. Because um, I feel like sometimes this person doesn't realize how they come off to you. And you know what's very interesting is I feel that they think that they feel this way about you as well. Like, I feel like this person feels like they cannot win with you and like, Maybe you don't understand how you come off to this person. And I don't want to say that that's an excuse, but it does kind of feel like an excuse a little bit. Like there's a lack of self-awareness or self-reflection going on. You know, we often accuse people of doing the things that we ourselves are doing <laughs> unintentionally, right? Like, have you ever met like two very stubborn people and both of them are proclaiming like, this person is so closed-minded and meanwhile they are also being closed-minded you know but both thinking they're right that's such a frustrating situation to be in to observe but when you're involved in it it's so hard to see outside of yourself right self-awareness is a practice it is a, not an easy thing to do either that's why most people don't do it they just project and blame instead but that really gets you nowhere in the long run but I feel that there's been a bit of that in this connection and it's actually developed guilt which is very interesting to me within this person's energy or this sense of like do you see this person like pulling their hair out <laughs> you know Correct, you made me a little uncomfortable. Okay, so most likely outcomes then for Sagittarius. What is the most likely outcome? Seven of Wands. Four of Cups. Ace of Wands and the Six of Swords. So, this is all about maintaining your peace, Sagittarius, and kind of ignoring, you know, anything or anyone that's going to fan the flames. Um, so, say if, like, somebody is coming at you in an aggressive or triggering or whatever way, I feel your best to detach or ignore, or you are doing that. Some of you are like... I can't hear you, la la la, <laughs> you know, um, that's one way I could read this, but let me also, but I also get a sense of like, uh, not wanting to deal with this right now, you know, or not wanting to deal with it in general because it's triggering to you or, you know, 
if I go back to the spiritual reading, it felt like there was, you were trying to manifest an outcome and nothing was happening or nothing was changing. So the sense of like, oh, I give up, go deal with it yourself. Or I, you know, I need to detach. Right. And I actually feel in a way when you go into that letting go energy, it actually brings about an improvement in your, in your energy field. Because the Ace of Wands is also about being inspired to a solution. But it's not through argument or making yourself right or proving a point. It is through detachment. Sometimes making no point is all the point you need to make. Let's see this person's most likely outcome. Four of Swords. Six of Cups. This person is needing to make peace with the past in order for them to remove their blockage. Whatever this is that they're holding on to that they feel bad about or guilty about, you know, or the need to explain themselves or the need to be wrong so you can be right or vice versa. Like all of that energy is what they're being called to let go of, especially during this full moon phase in Pisces. Um, they're needing to make peace with the past so that they can be present in the now and therefore can attract to them a better outcome for themselves as well and for the connection. You know, this person was kept looking at the, or keeps looking at the past or feeling at a crossroads about it. And they needed to make peace with that. And right on the heels of that, when they make peace with that and forgive thyself as well. For we know not what we do. Okay. Right on the heels of that comes the Ace of Pentacles, an opportunity, a real opportunity to commit to something real and true. This also talks about loyalty and abundance. So that's what's in store for this person, but they have some emotional work that's on their spiritual trail that they've got to cope with and deal with and soothe before this comes about. Now, how long will that take? Only they can control that. Only they can control that timeline. It's their work to do, whether it takes a day, two days, 10 years, three months. I don't know. It's a variable, right? But on the heels of that is an opportunity for them to not make it right, not make it up, but to move forward in a better and more right direction. Wow. Tense. Let's see what the guidance is for you and your person. Oh, wow. Three cards. I'm not going to read them all, though. 37, 51, and 58. 37. This one has my attention. My attention to unwanted can't defy the law of attraction. If your life has caused you to ask for an improvement in a situation, no matter what it is, and you're no longer offering a chronic thought vibration that is an opposition of your new desire, your desire must come to you. But you cannot continue to keep alive within you a vibrational pattern of what you do not want and receive what you do want that will defy the law of attraction. Wow, that is like perfect to what I just said in this reading, like literally. And I'll read the basics of these. It says, I can always enter my vibrational vortex of creation by being in the state of appreciation. Get the front door out of here. That's what I literally said in the spiritual reading. Rewind it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then the last one says, life is supposed to be good for me. That's our strongest message to you. Life is supposed to be good for you. Do your best to find the best of the positive aspects that surround you. Look for things to appreciate, even if there aren't many. Look for things to feel good about. 
give your attention as best as you can to the best things that are going on with you. And then the good things will find you right here and right now. Ooh, I love that for you, Sag. Okay, I'm going to leave it there for now. Zodiac signs you may be connecting with or having your own chart. I have Aries, Pisces, Scorpio, <laughs> yawning, Sagittarius. Sagittarius again, Pisces, Taurus, Virgo, and I saw Aquarius out earlier and Libra as well, but and Capricorn. But take what resonates, leave what doesn't. If it did resonate, let me know in the comments below. Also check me out on Facebook. Uh, my social media is linked below as well. Um, wishing you all the best either way, Sagittarius. And until next time, my friends, namaste.